Hello everybody, it is Ender. Today we're going to be doing a review on number three of Sandman Dream Country. Now this is a almost a short story collection and it is the shortest stories in the entire thing because there's only four stories and first of all, it's the shortest edition of all of them, okay? And then second of all, half of the book is essentially just notes, just scripts. There, that, that's just script. So this is so short. So I'm going to be going over each story individually. First story was about Calliope. Great story. Despite the fact that it was very dark, I, I found that, that it was very, very deep and detailed and the message was very clear. Uh, I thought I thought that it was very short and like it was really quick to the point. It feels like stories are trying to be philosophical and really extend its, uh, its length way past what it can be. Uh, and this didn't do that. It was very short, it, it was sweet, it made sense, and it would move them. So it was a very good story. This one's maybe a, a two or three out of five. Second one is called Dream of a Thousand Cat. Now this is a cat uh, story that's just really, really weird. And to this day, I, I cannot wrap my head around it. This the story seems to be that each animal or each being seems to be uh, above all the rest or, or as the dominant species or it dreams of being the dominant species as if everybody has the same dream and that's kind of the underlying uh, way of connecting all, all of humanity and all of animals together and I'm not so sure exactly what to make of it. That seems to be what I, what I can figure out but of all of the stories this seems to be my least favorite just because it seems to go on about nothing in particular. Now, I'm sure that's not true. Now, as I've gone on and read a bunch of more Sandman stuff, it seems to me that basically everything Neil Gaiman writes down is something, is something you can write a paragraph on. But in this case, I couldn't find it as clearly. It didn't seem as interesting to me, mainly, and I didn't find it as philosophically intriguing. The third story was about a Midsummer Night's Dream, a Shakespeare play, and I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but uh, this is a very interesting story because it's one of the most famous Sandman stories. It's basically just the influences, the, the things that influenced a Midsummer Night's Dream coming to watch a play about Midsummer Night's Dream. So at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're reading a book about people watching a play about themselves, uh, and the play is about watching a play uh, and uh, you know, so on and so forth. And that's kind of the confusing thing about this. So because of that, it's clearly very deep, it's clearly very interesting, ah, but it doesn't really do much for me. It's an okay story, it was a very fun story, and but the difficulty was that I hadn't really read the story be before I, I came in. So what I was very kind of confused about was what was the play inside of the play and what was the play in other than well, the people that were actually sitting there. I was very confused as to what was going on in the story. Uh, after actually watching the uh, entire play uh, online, I was able to understand it much, much better. And now reading it over again, I found it very, uh, found it much more interesting. But at the same time, it still doesn't pique my interest that much. It was a very good story. This one's a three for me. It wasn't that amazing, but it was a cool, interesting, original look at something that we've never seen before. And it seems to be something that might pave the way for future stories. But right now, it seems to just be something like Neil Gaiman having fun. The last story is called Facade, and this is the weirdest one for me. Right at the first time I read this, I thought it was garbage. I thought it was really bad, and I had a very difficult time figuring out what it meant. Uh, I had a very difficult fi time finding any enjoyment in it at all. But then I looked into the actual details, and I realized this isn't an original character. This is a character from somewhere else, and that's what makes it so special. And because of that, that was really interesting. Now reading it over again, I found myself really enjoying it way more than I should have. This is a very cool story, because it takes something that already exists, create something brand new and brilliant out of it that's a really great message for uh, all of comics and all of people in general. It seems to be something that speaks to a part of our mind that really has not been spoken to very much. And because of that, this is maybe my favorite story of them all. This one seems to be, I think it's a three. I, I really enjoyed this one. I thought that this one was very smart. And by the end, uh, I really, really liked the craft around this story more than anything. The, viewing it in a state of something that comes after so much else, that made me really like it. So overall, the Dream Country, it was a very, very cool set of short stories. Some of them were really interesting. Some of them were not that interesting, like Cats, the one with the cats. Um, overall, I found it pretty cool. There's certain ones like Calliope that I really, really connected with and just saw something interesting in me because there's the artist in me that really enjoyed that aspect of it. But at the same time, I really enjoyed the final facade story and, and Midsummer Night's Dream was so complex and so beautiful that I really want to call that my favorite. But I, I don't know. Overall, I think that it was a two. It was a really original, cool way of looking at things that we haven't looked at before, but at the same time, this doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, it doesn't have a narrative, really an overarching narrative that makes me interested in it than uh, I have before. It, it's an okay story. It's a pretty good story for Sandman. For Sandman, it's kind of subpar. That's my review. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button down below and comment what you thought of my review and what you thought of the books if you disagree or you agree, whatever you say. Uh, if you want to see any more reviews like this, if you want to see more Sandman reviews or any other fantasy reviews, hit the subscribe button down below. Also, in the link in the description, you can click on my Goodreads page and follow me there to see what I'm reading right now. That's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.